Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to our service today as we worship together as the Church of God. Although from our separate homes, we can do this together uh, through the YouTube. And we really pray that it be a time of blessing and rejoicing as we stand together and adore our Lord. Uh, at the outset, I want to thank all of those who have been incredibly generous in supporting the continual work of the church and those who've donated towards uh, food for those in our church who are battling and for beyond uh, where people are really struggling with hunger. Again, I would like to encourage you that at a time when we are isolated in our own homes through the lockdown, that you phone each other and encourage around the church as much as possible. We need that. We need the contact. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the devotionals. Apologies for the background uh, sounds of the wind and sometimes the hardy dars, which I've managed to throttle. And hopefully you're enjoying the game that drifts across behind us at times. But let's uh, start our service this morning by uh, from uh, call to worship from Psalm 100. Uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Come, let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you're in control at this time. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the lessons we've been learning as we've reflected and read your word and prayed a lot. Uh, forgive us for the times when we have shown uh, character flaws through things like impatience, frustration, fear, doubt and anger because of the situation and being enclosed. And we pray forgive us for those things and help us master them. Uh, and Lord, would you be gracious to us, enable us to have the strength to show Christian grace during this period and following on from now. We also, Lord, pray that we would seek your guidance and your will as to your plan for us as we move forward. And we now pray, Lord, that the meditation of our hearts and the words of our mouths as we worship you would be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let us worship God as God's people in this place. God and God alone. 
Jesus ascended to heaven, he had the following to say, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. This is in Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. Being obedient to believers and followers of Jesus, we want to see His kingdom being furthered and established. We want to see His word blessing other people as well. When we see something exciting and beautiful, we want to instinctively share it with loved ones, like a brilliant sunset or a beautiful full moon or whatever it may be. So too it is when we experience the joy and love of Jesus in our lives. We want to share it with loved ones. To further his kingdom, God has commissioned us to help establish it with our contributions. God doesn't need our money for his existence. He needs true believers to spread the word. Your offering, therefore given with gratitude and love, is what God wants from us so as to achieve His will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless our offerings to you this morning. May it be wisely used to establish and further your kingdom. May it bring joy and love to your servants and ministries of our church. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you that we can gather today as one body, as one voice, as one heart. We give you all the praise and glory and honor. And we thank you for being a father who loves his children, that you have continued to provide for us, that your word says that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. In this time, of troubles and fear with lockdown and COVID-19. I pray that you will continue to encourage us to show who you are to us. Father God, I just pray that you will continue to remind us that you are the creator of all things and that you hold us in the palm of your hand. I pray especially for the leadership of our church, of our city and of our nation especially our president Cyril Ramaphosa. I pray, Father God, that you will strengthen his foundation, that he walks with you. I pray that you will give him wisdom and strength to make good decisions today and going forward. I pray, Father God, that you will continue to let him be a good ambassador for his country. Lord God, I pray that you will also be with us during this time to be good ambassadors for you. Let us continue to be good disciples, to be good neighbors, and to always shine your light and show your love wherever we go and to whomever we encounter. 
Lord God, I pray for you to be with our Gap family right now and our extended family, especially those who are going through a hard time, whether it be financially, with their health, or even emotionally. I pray that your peace that transcends all understanding will remain with them in their homes. Father God, during this time, we also hold up Trevor Mulman to you. He was rushed back to the hospital on Friday after his hospital wound opened up again. We ask, Father God, that you will continue to let his healing improve and that you will shower him with your love. We pray for Josie Nair as she recovers in hospital after having surgery on Thursday. We pray, Father God, that uh, she continues to get the treatment that she needs and that her healing will just improve from this day forward. We pray, Father God, that all pain will be removed from her body in Jesus' name. We pray for Hannah Skippers, whose eye has already improved with its pain and insight. We pray, Father God, that you will bless the healing that has already happened in his body and we pray that you will continue to let his eye heal we pray for, we pray father god for fiona's sister jenny muller who is currently recovering in hospital after surgery that she had on wednesday to remove a cancerous stomach growth we pray father god that you will continue to show her your healing powers that your Holy Spirit will move in her and grant her peace and continue to let her body improve with your healing. And Father God, we also hold up John Dutoy, Brian's nephew, as he is still in stage 4 of liver cancer. We pray, Father God, that you are with him and his family at this time. We pray a peace into his heart and into the hearts of all of his family members. We pray, Father God, that you will give them strength, you will give them understanding, and that at this time, they will continue to experience your love. I pray, Father God, that he will know that he is loved by you and that he is a child of yours. And we pray this all and for every single member of our congregation, our extended family and our friends, we pray for your healing touch to be on them right now and that your love and peace will flow in all of their homes. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh! 
to be with you all this morning, um, coming from my home to yours. 
And when Rory asked me to speak this morning, I was um, grateful for the opportunity and quite excited as we weren't following a sermon series and I was, be able to, I was able to uh, choose any topic I wanted. I've always wanted to speak on the character of God. However, Rory reminded me that I only have 20 minutes and not four years. Uh, so that's for another time. But as I prayed about the direction of the message this morning, a theme kept recurring. And so I've decided to call my message this morning, My Deliverer is Standing By. And it's taken from the line in the Rich Mullen song of the same name. You know, for purely selfish reasons, I really enjoyed the idea of a lockdown. Um, it was a time for us to um, do something different. We could stay at home. Uh, we didn't have to drive anywhere. We didn't have to be on the roads. And it was quite surreal, wasn't it? It felt like we could breathe. In fact, it felt like the world was taking a collective deep breath. There were memes on the internet about nature and about cities. Do you remember Venice? How the dolphins had once again come back into the canals? And, you know, for the first time, it felt like a real break, a break that I had needed for years. But here we are at day 52, and I have rather a different perspective. As you can imagine, for those of us who grew up with freedom to travel and where to spend our days and when and whom we could visit and where and we could work. The reality of this lockdown with the underlying cause of COVID-19 and the financial repercussions, they're beginning to weigh now heavily on our mind and our hearts. Our paychecks are no longer guaranteed. Um, we're tired of being isolated from loved ones and friends. And instead of feeling refreshed, we're now feeling a sense of weariness. And to compound it all, it's not as if the challenges that we had before we entered this lockdown in, in March have even gone away. They were, they were put on hold because of this coronavirus. So for many of us, these have become quite worrying times. Things are radically different to what they were last year, when even hairdressers and teachers were considered um, essential services. So let's look then to God's word for wisdom. What do we do? David knew all about times of trouble. As a young shepherd, he would often be isolated out in the rugged, hilly terrain of the, of the, of the mountains and hills outside of, of, um, of Bethlehem. He would have to look after his flocks against wild animals. As the king-elect, he was constantly pursued by Saul and his armies. As one commentator says about David, he lost his safety, he lost his youth, he lost his family, he lost his career, he lost his rights, he lost his connection with the covenant people, and he lost his comforts. How many of us does that, how, to how many of us does that sound familiar, even today? So David had every reason to be troubled, to be afraid. But in Psalm 18, we are given an incredibly descriptive picture of how David trusted God as his deliverer and how in the midst of these trying days, we can too. David knew his deliverer's character. David knew his deliverer's power. And David knew his deliverer's delight. So let's look at the first point, that David knew his deliverer's character. In Psalm 18, 1, verses 1 to 3, it says, David says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield, 
and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I've been saved from my enemies. The very first thing we see is David's declaration of love. How often do we tell God that we love him? Not through song lyrics, not by singing praise songs, but from that deep expression of our hearts. I love you, Lord. David's statement, I love you, is actually in a form of a verb that's not found anywhere else in Scripture. It's an impulsive or spontaneous outburst that was full of deep emotion, even compassion and tenderness. David was compelled to tell God that he loved him. Why? Because he felt so passionately towards him. The Amplified Bible describes this love of David as fervent, as devoted. David was a man after God's heart. He enjoyed an intimate relationship with him, which was built on trust and listening to his voice. In verses 2 to 3, it appears that David is piling on these metaphors, but each of these attributes has its significance. They all attest to the ability of God to be David's deliverer. They are all metaphors of strength and steadfastness and security. David calls the Lord my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. As a shepherd in the desert, David knew about huge rocks that could provide shade under the, from under the scorching sun. It would also be a firm place where he could stand and do battle instead of standing on the shifting sands of the desert ground. The rock was an immovable foundation. At the same time, he calls the Lord his fortress. Here we think of something that's impregnable, inaccessible. It's a place of safety where enemies cannot follow. And then David identifies the Lord as his deliverer the one who brought about his rescue, the one who carried him away to safety. He further exclaims that this, this is the God in whom he trusts and takes refuge. He confidently knows these things about his God. He goes on to say, The Lord is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Interestingly, in the Hebrew, the meaning for the word shield can also be described as the scaly skin of a crocodile, which functions as armor. And again, we get this image of a defense which is strong and impenetrable, my shield. In this passage, David gives God at least nine titles, which characterize his strength, and his ability to save. So in times of trouble, David could trust his deliverer because he was confident of who he was. But David could also trust God because he had seen what God could do. David knew his deliverer's power. And we can read in verses 4 through 5 when David recalls the agony of being under attack. The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. How many of us wake up at that bewitching hour of two o'clock in the morning and suddenly all our thoughts are turned to anxiety? We start thinking about health scares. We start thinking about relationships that are out of sync. We start thinking about our finances. We start thinking about our jobs and our salaries. We even think about things that have never bothered us before. An array of issues. Most of them which we have no control over whatsoever. And it seems like all of these daily concerns take on this insurmountable size at that time of the night. And the more we think about what to do, it feels like we could become more and more tightly bound by fear. 
The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. But you see, David didn't only know God's character. He could also attest to his saving power because he had experienced it. So in the midst of personal anguish and moments of incredible panic, he was able to call upon the name of the Lord because he could recall God's saving might and power. In verses 7 through 15, David gives God's deliverance or, or, or shares it with us in these powerful images. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and consuming fire came from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. And it goes on and on. And then we come to verse 14 and it says he shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled lightning bolts and routed them. The depths of the sea became visible. The foundations of the world were exposed at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Powerful images of who David recalled his saving God to be. Sure, this is an awesome God. Our magnificent God. Our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings. This is the one who is the same yesterday and today and forever. As David remembered what his God could do, we need to remember. All At all times, God has shown up and he's changed our circumstances. We've experienced miraculous healings. We've experienced financial windfalls. We've been offered the right job at the right time. We have each had those times when there is no other explanation than God showing up and intervening in our lives with his grace and mercy. But our deliverance is not always at the time or in the manner that we would prefer or expect. Sometimes God's deliverance doesn't always mean removing us from a challenging situation, but rather assuring us that he will walk with us through these difficult times. And Isaiah 43, 2 gives us this analogy of God walking with us through deep waters so that we will not be overwhelmed and through the fires so that we will not be burned. We can always have confidence that when we call upon the name of the Lord, he hears us and he answers our prayer. Finally, why could David believe God for deliverance? Because he knew his deliverer's delight. In verses 16 through 18, David recalls his delivery by the hands of the Lord and he says, He reached down from on high and took a hold of me. He pulled me out of deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out to a spacious place. And then we have this incredible concluding line. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Think of it. Why could David so fervently and passionately declare that he loved the Lord? Because he knew how much he was loved. Why could he confidently trust his deliverer? Because he understood how much he meant to his deliverer, to his God. We bring God so much joy. We bring God's delight. We are his delight. You are his joy today. I am his joy today. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world. He so loved the world. And in 1 John 4 it says, we can love because God first loved us. I've always treasured the verses that we find in Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you in his love. He will delight in you with singing. He takes away our punishment. 
He quietens us with his love. He sings over us. We have a deliverer and our deliverer is standing by today. He is mighty and able. He is loving and compassionate. And his name is Jesus. As believers, we can continue with every confidence that as he sailed with the disciples through violent storms on the Sea of Galilee, so he travels with us today through these times when we feel insecure and unsafe. The message describes Jesus' words in Hebrews 13 like this, I will never let you down, never walk off and leave you. In your need this day, let's call upon the name of the Lord because he promises us that he will save us. Let's pray together. Gracious God, this is a message about hope, because it is a message that you, as our deliverer, will save us from our circumstances, from our challenges. You will walk through us and be with us at all times. Help us to remember that, Lord, that as we go through tough times and our minds turn to things that we cannot reconcile with hope. Help us to remember that you are our deliverer, our peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's finish our service now with the closing song. Thank you.
Thank you for joining our service. It was wonderful for us all to gather for a time of worship and to share in the word, especially with the inspiring and challenging message brought to us this morning by Leanne. I'm sure you'll agree that even though we are apart, we are still together as one body through the Spirit of Christ. Come let us join together in a closing prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the privilege that we are still able to stand together as a church in this country and that we are able to gather together for a special time in your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can call upon your name in our time of need. Your word says you rescue us because you delight in us. You alone, Lord, are our deliverer. Help us to draw near to you in this coming week as we stay close to your word. Help us also and give us strength to go through what the challenges are we have to face in this new week. We ask all this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have a great week ahead and stay safe. Till next time.